we're going to uh, initiate a monthly webinar uh, to follow up on this one so that this is just the start. Uh, the goal of this is to give everybody who's a participant on HiQ the opportunity to come together, um, talk about issues they may, ha may be having, and what we'll try to do is have new features to highlight um, that you may be aware of, may not be aware of, but it'll be a chance to have an open forum that we can all discuss what's going on uh, with the HiQ system. Secondly, just a housekeeping note, um, with this webinar, we encourage you to ask questions. Um, we are tracking those questions um, as the webinar goes along. If you notice in the top right in that dialog box there, there is a raise your hand button. Um, if there's something that you feel that's very important to uh, discuss while the, the pre presentation is going on, please raise your hand and we'll try to get to that. Um, if it can wait till the end, just enter the question for the staff and we'll be recording those and answering those at the end of the session. That's all I have, so we'll turn it over to Paul. Thanks, Josh. As uh, Billy introduced me earlier, my name is Paul Kostrowski. I'm the Director of IT and Product Development for AgVenture. I'd like to spend a few minutes going over uh, what's improved and what's new with HiQ. Um, over the past year, we've worked to improve the overall user experience, improve the accuracy and functionality of, of the system overall. Um, we've tried, we strive to improve the user experience by making um, everything from small to large scale sweeping changes. Uh, some of the examples of the uh, range of changes include at the, uh, the smaller end of the scale, we have uh, user interface changes, uh, which include simple improvements such as the option to limit choices in the season drop down selection, eliminating the need to scroll through all the choices available, um, add the option to include uh, multiple overlays on the screen when you're working on the screen on, on the UI, um, such as roads, the water, waterways, and points of interest. Um, the, uh, the informational messages that you used to get that would pop up randomly when you were using a system because of some system-generated error that were very cryptic in nature, um, they've, they've been cleaned up and they're a little bit more descriptive to help with the, uh, the deciphering of those messages, whether it be with a high-Q tech or some programming in the background that needs to be done. The field measure tool uh, accuracy has been improved and will now is, is now dynamic. You can actually use that um, and it will show you actually while you are using it what the measurement on the screen what the measurement of that actual distance is on the screen. Some of the, uh, the larger changes include uh, data editing. Um, you can now change multiple fields, the attributes for multiple fields, and you can update and save them. Um, whereas before, you could only do that for a, a single field uh, individually. Um, changes to reporting include We've, uh, we've changed the, the color schemes on all the, uh, for instance, yield maps. The, uh, we've reduced that color scheme so it's a little easier to read. Um, and it makes the, uh, the maps more accurate. Uh, the histogram information has been changed um, and will now reflect the low end to high end. Uh, and it will scale correctly based on that. Uh, algorithms for, for calculating acreages have been improved. The, uh, the soil type map color schemes are now uniform across all fields rather than different colors for the same information. Soil type maps can now be generated at the farm level versus uh, individual field level, although that is still available. Some of the, some of the bigger changes include the overall overhaul of all query designs um, so that the, uh, the system response time and uh, performance has been increased tremendously. Um, report generation and DSS queries that previously took minutes or hours to run now takes seconds. Um, I think that's the, the, one of the single biggest improvements we've made. Um, 
We've introduced algorithms to remove uh, bad data and minuscule segments from calculations. Um, we've also uh, added several new features. Um, some of the more noticeable new features are the, uh, the option to use uh, Google Hybrid Maps as the base layer for, uh, for the user interface when you're actually working on the site. Um, we, we switched over to Google just because we, we felt like you would get more detail um, using those maps. Uh, all reports now have the option to include uh, NAIP imagery as the background. And if you choose to, to use the imagery as a background, you can also in, have the options to include any or all of these roads, waterways, and points of interest. Mm -hmm. um, boundary edity, editing features have been enhanced. And these now include the ability to, uh, to snap to uh, when, you're, when you're drawing new boundaries to, uh, to neighboring boundaries. We've also added the ability to add exclusion zones within a boundary. Uh, yield data. Uh, when, you're, uh, when you're uploading yield data, you can correct it on the fly as you're uploading. You can, you can correct the crop type and the harvest date as you are uploading the data. Farms and fields can now be moved among different growers. Uh, when you move any any of that information, the, all of the history associated with that particular field will also be moved. Uh, we've designed a query tool. It's just a quick way to look at a, at a particular segment or boundary and gather information uh, on that particular segment, such as who the, uh, who the dealer is, the grower, the, the farm name, the, the field size, and so on. Um, and one of the, uh, one of the bigger uh, new features we've added is the ability to create communities by drawing a polygon rather than having to select individual fields and farms to add to a community. Uh, just makes things much easier when you're creating a community and also geographically it's a lot easier to just draw a polygon around a specific area. Um, some of the, some of the more Performance-based based features that are not as noticeable that are kind of behind the scenes are uh, the ability to access your data that you've uploaded uh, for DSS queries or generating maps, any of that type of thing, almost immediately. Uh, before, that was an overnight process just because it was so, uh, so demanding on the system. Uh, we've changed a lot of that, how a lot of that works so that it is now much more efficient and runs much, much more quickly. Um, and as, as a technical note, it actually, once you upload the data, every 15 minutes, uh, that data will be queued to be available to the system. Um, the previous crop will now be, uh, automatically, gener be, gener be automatically generated when you're running DSS. Uh, reports or queries um, as opposed to having to manually enter that data. And multiple processing queues have been created uh, for uh, more efficient processing of information. Um, this just allows uh, multiple, multiple different types of processes to run in the background. Um, throughout this whole process over this last year and a half, um, one thing that was made uh, abundantly clear to us is the, uh, the need to correct bad data in the system. Um, it's, it's the old cliche, garbage in, garbage out. Um, and what we identify as bad data is anything that causes errors in geometry calculations. Um, and this could be anything from GPS errors to uh, errors in logging of the data, uh, such as somebody forgetting to turn off a piece of equipment. Um, so what, what, we've, what we've focused on, and this is what we are, we're going to show today, um, is what we consider to be the most vital, important piece of this, is getting valid data into the system. Um, and so what, what, we've, what we've created is what we call the, uh, the IET, 
or the import edit tool. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn this over to, uh, to Adam Zatoli. He's one of the developers who has played a tremendous role in getting this uh, and all of these improvements and new features that we've just, uh, we've just gone over. Um, and Adam's going to demonstrate this new tool. So Adam, you're up. 